This next Thank guy, you, he's the so co-producer of the Turbo Tuesdays with me and Mikey McKernan. Uh, honestly, these shows wouldn't happen without him. He's an integral part. He's very funny. Uh, the show's going to get very filthy at this point, so be sure to cleanse yourselves afterwards. Ladies and gentlemen, give a warm welcome to John Derby! Just want to make sure everyone got here safe tonight. Got to be careful out in these streets. Things, uh, things are difficult this day and age. I was, uh, I was debating all week on what I was going to talk about when I got up here. Because I kind of had something crazy happen to me this week. Easily in my mind, probably easily the weirdest thing that I've ever experienced. Um, I haven't lived an overly sheltered life. I've seen some shit, but uh, this one, this was, this was a new experience for me. So I decided I'm gonna go ahead and share that with you guys because it happened right down the street from here, which hopefully management doesn't get pissed off about the mood I'm about to set. So, um, so I get home Rape is not that on a Tuesday Come night. On, it's not that difficult from the lesbian bar which is where you go on a Tuesday night. <laughs> and so I get home, it's, it's about 1 a.m., go upstairs, and I realize, son of a bitch, forgot to go to the bank again. It's a weird thing to realize at 1 a.m., but that's my schedule. I'm a late night person. I've, I've, I've lived in this neighborhood for almost eight years now. I, I've walked up and down virtually every street, at all hours of the day, night, doesn't Monday, Tuesday, Saturday, Sunday, doesn't matter. I've never felt afraid, I've never had anything happen to me. I've walked from the shitty Greyhound station to my house at 3 a.m. with luggage. Nothing's ever happened to me. I'm not afraid of it. I think I live in a nice area. Sort of. So I realize I've gone out twice today without having gone to the bank. I'm like, fuck, I've got a rent check that's gonna clear tomorrow. I better make sure there's sufficient funds. Fuck it, I'll take a walk. What's the big deal? I do it all the time. It's on the way to the 7-Eleven. Do it all the time. Throw on a jacket, throw on my headphones. Let's make an event out of it. Let's take a walk. It'll be fine. So I leave my house. On my person, I have headphones, cell phone, wallet, rent money. These facts are important for what's going to happen later. So as I'm leaving, I'm 10 feet from my house. I see a car parked on the opposite side of where I'm walking. Two people exit the car, cross the side of the street that I'm on, appear to go into an apartment building. I don't think much of it. I've got DJ Khaled playing, I don't give a fuck what these people are doing. All I do is win. I don't care. I don't give a shit. So I'm walking by and I get to right where they had gone to. And I notice in my peripheral, because that's my <laughs> brother in the Air Force calls it situational awareness. Peripheral. <laughs> I notice that these people haven't gone inside. Again, all I do is win. I don't give a shit. I'm on the way somewhere. They're like, they're probably waiting for a friend. Don't care. I get about four more steps from there. And right on this side, I hear a little... <laughs> oh, that's weird. No one talks to me. Take a look to the left. <laughs> Gentlemen and a young lady, each holding guns to me, screaming, give me your shit, give me your shit. I don't know what the hell to do, I'm disoriented, I've got music blaring. I just throw my hands, I'm like, I ain't got shit, I ain't got shit. Finally, get the headphones off, the girl comes over, still holding her gun, she says, I'll get it. She puts a hand in my pocket, reaching for the cell phone. In my personal opinion, she was reaching around a long time in there. I'm not saying anything, but I think she found my gun. <laughs> so then the guy, who's clearly a fucking professional thief, decides he's gonna reach into my other pocket. So visually, this is me at you know, 1.15 in the morning, under a bright-ass streetlight, 
hands up, girl on this side, guy on this side, each rifling through my fucking pockets. As this is happening, I don't know what her gun's doing. I've stopped paying attention to her because she's very small. She doesn't scare me as much. He has his gun pointed at my fucking liver. That's not a good place to have a gun. And I don't drink that much, but I don't trust my liver's gonna save me for shit. <laughs> so as this is happening, I, I've had so many thoughts already. Everything's flying through my head a million miles an hour. I'm like, oh, I watch a lot of burn notice. I can take this dude. I can fucking take this guy. But no, that shit doesn't happen on USA. This is in North Hollywood right now. And I'm so afraid if I do anything to this guy, she's gonna flip the fuck out. That's her, that's her man. What kind of a woman would let her man get pumped like that and not do anything? This bitch is gonna shoot me in the back. So I don't do anything. The gun to deliver makes me super uncomfortable. As it should if you're not living in the Middle East or something. <laughs> And so while this is happening, I just, I, I didn't even decide, I'd love to say I decided to do this. I didn't decide a fucking thing. I made a move that I couldn't take back, and I had to see it through. So I decided as this is happening, he has his hand on my wallet. I go for the gun. Why the fuck wouldn't you? White people are crazy as shit. Why wouldn't you go for the gun? As scared as I am of black people sometimes, Black people are always afraid of white people. Because they're fucking... Black people can be scary. But scary is what you find in a haunted house. White people are fucking crazy. And crazy is some shit you find in a basement. Or a dungeon. There's a fucking difference. Dexter's not about a black guy. Anyone notice that? Dexter's about a fucking white guy that is better looking than me. Oh, what? Wait a minute, what's the, what's the black guy's name in Jackass from MTV? Oh wait, there isn't one. There isn't one, because white people are fucking crazy. So to prove this point, I go for the gun. The second I even move, I mean, it, it's a slight, like, I could have been a, doing a pump fake. It was this. That bitch was out. Flojo style. Fucking boom. I've never seen anyone run that Usain Bolt was like, dumb bitch, you fuss. <laughs> bitch, what's cool is she was out. Out. And I was like, well, that's the end of that relationship. He's gonna dump her ass. I'm like, there's no way he was like, hey, if he makes even the slightest move, you fucking run, baby. You don't ever look back. Last of the Mohican style, I'll find you. So she's out. So him and I now are holding this gun. He's got the handle with the trigger. I've got the front part holding it down, trying to not get fucking shot in the balls or worse. And at this point, I'm realizing, like, what the fuck did I do? I didn't know. I wasn't trying to disarm and fucking judo chop or some shit. I've never been in a fight in my life that wasn't with someone I was related to. So I'm fucking scared as hell. We're, we have the most awkward man dance that's ever happened in the history of two men moving together. And we look at each other, right in the eyes, like eye contact, like he was looking at my soul, I was looking at his soul. We were one fucking person for one, we couldn't be from more different places, I'm certain of that. He was a young black man who's holding up an older white guy who's never had a gun pointed at him in his life. But for that moment, we were the same fucking cat. And we looked at each other, and we were both like, what the fuck are we doing? And we ran away. Like children that spilt something. He fucking booked, I booked, it was awesome. Couldn't have ended any fucking better in my mind. But as I mentioned before, I'm stupid and crazy. So I run for like a block. And then I stop, because I get really pissed off. I'm like, yo, fuck that. Come back. So I go back to where it just happened. Like, they're going to double back, because they don't have a car waiting for them. They're going to come back and be like, well, that was fucking weird. <laughs> no, that's what I did. So I'm hiding behind a gate to a fucking dumpster, just be like creeping out, and I'm calling the cops. and like, all right, bitch, this is what happened. I've never called 911 before. I didn't even know what to expect. Apparently your phone goes into emergency mode, which I'm unaware of, and they can track you at that point. And she's asking me questions like, okay, what happened? Where are you? Blah, blah, blah. And then she gets to the question and goes, well, what did they look like? 
what color were they? And then I was like, oh, don't make me say it. I'm not racist. I don't want to think that. I'm, I'm like, and I'm sure somewhere in my mind, and I'm not even proud of this, I was probably like, oh, of course they were black. God damn it. No. When she gets over, she's like, were they white? Were they black? Were they Hispanic? And I'm like, <sighs> like I'm ashamed for an entire race. I'm just like, they were black. <laughs> I didn't make, I didn't wish they, I wish it was a fucking skinhead, I really do. Wish it was some white Nazi motherfucker, we could all hate him. But it wasn't the case. And so finally, like, units are on the way, and I'm like, alright, cool. They're like, just wait there, and I'm like, really? Wait here? I was going to anyway, so I'm a fucking idiot, but that's fine. So I call my mom, and it's like, it's like two in the morning now, I'm like, mom, don't panic, but I was robbed at gunpoint. She goes, oh my god, I'm like, fuck that, cancel my credit cards. So she's taking care of that. Cops are on the way. This is what they got out of my wallet, by the way. I had nine dollars in cash. Nine fucking dollars. It would have been a lot more, except for as I mentioned, I went to the lesbian bar and I already gotten robbed there for twelve dollar Jack and Cokes. So they only had nine bucks left. They can thank the lesbians for that. So the cops finally get there, file a report, blah blah blah, the whole deal. They don't really seem to give a shit, if I'm being honest with you. They were just kind of like, well, why are you walking, dumbass? <laughs> and the last thing the cop says to me, which is my favorite fucking thing that happened in this entire event, it's favorite thing, he looks at me, it's like he's getting back in the car and he turns back like he couldn't leave without having said this because I don't feel like a fucking turd already. Looks back and he's just like, well, you know what you should have done? You already had the gun pointed. Instead of just pointing it down, you should have taken it from him turned it on him and gotten your shit back. That's the advice my tax dollars paid for? Put my fucking life in more jeopardy than my dumb ass already did? I'm like, there wasn't a single person I've told this story to, which is a hundred now, that were just like, dude, that's, you should have done more. You really should have like, ripped your shirt off Jason Statham style and gone transporter on everybody. I'm like, dude, my name is John Derby, not fucking John McClane, okay? This is not a movie, dude. Hey, you guys get home safe tonight. Thank you so much for this.